Hey all, this is Val here with another Dungeon Hunter Champions video. In today's video, we're going to be covering Monument, the Fire Dragon Guard. Alright guys, so he is supposed to be the new hotness. I had a request from one of my viewers to say, you know, I'm not convinced his undying buff to everyone is going to be as good as people think. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and test it. I invested the resources. If things go well here, I am gonna bump him up to uh, six star. So we're gonna check him out. Let's see what he's got. All right, you know how we do here. We start off with skills. Uh, his first auto attack skill is Dragon's Favor. Swings mace damaging enemies. Passive, when an ally's current health drops below 30%, apply the undying buff on that ally. Each ally can only be affected by Dragon's Favor once every 45 seconds, cannot affect self or other Dragon Guards. So basically, what's going to happen is someone goes below 30%, he pops the Undying buff, which protects them, and that should give your healers enough time to bring that unit up. Now, you can't stack multiple of these, so you can't bring a bunch of Dragon Guards and have them all protect each other. That's not gonna work. This is the money shot for him, and this is why we're testing it. I don't have it quite max skill yet. One more and I get that duration of one second. So let's go ahead and go to the next one. His first active skill, Demoralizing Blow. A mighty blow that deals damage to enemies in a huge arc and lowers attack. Bonus damage based on defense. His second active skill, Guardian's Impact raises defense of all nearby allies and jumps to a location, slamming the ground. Deals damage to enemies in the area. Damage is based on defense. His third active skill, Megaton Stomp. Stomps the ground, damages, and stuns nearby enemies. Stun duration increases for each debuff on the affected enemy. Damage is based on defense. And his synergy trait is increases defense of ally fire champions by 25%. So we got a good defense based monster here. He gets bonus damage on active skill one and then uh, active skill two and active skill three damage is based on defense. Now his first skill, we really, there's no benefit to going um, either rapid or anything like that or um, adept. None of that because we don't really have him here for these skills right there. So Adept kind of is out of the option. His skill here isn't it based on how many attacks he does or how quickly he does them. So there goes Rapid. Really, he just needs to live. So you're looking at Sturdy, Life, or anything that really buffs your um, survivability. As you can see, I actually didn't build out all of his gear first. He's not as tanky as he could be. I went Sturdy, Sturdy. Uh, resistance or excuse me I went sturdy sturdy warding because that's the best I have that could give him the best defense and the most HP if we take a look at his stats right now he's at 27 K he's got 1200 or 1300 defense and I didn't focus on anything else um, he did pick up that 38 resistance so he's got 53 percent resistance so hopefully you should be able to live with that uh, defense However, his HP is not ideal, but as you can see from my gear, I do freely admit that I have room to improve on. So I did forget to mention that. Um, let's go over the build I went. I went defense, defense, HP. Now, um, as you can see, I have plenty of room to grow here in these two slots, which will help me take care of his HP concerns. And then for defense, I have these slots. I, I mean, he does need a lot of work. I recognize that. But my resources have been kind of strapped lately. So that's why they're like that. But let's take him in and see what we can do. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to bring him in here. But we're going to bring a less than ideal team. So we're going to bring him. We're going to go ahead and we're going to bring Kendrick. We're going to bring the this guy. And then we actually do need some good uh, DPS because we just want to bring these guys as our trouble units that are going to give us a problem we're not going to bring Monus we want to put it in as bad situation as we can and we'll go with max HP we'll go with max HP we'll give everybody just a little bit more survivability 
All right, here we go. We're gonna hit auto and we'll target him, even though we're not really looking at damage. I mean, Sigrun might be cheating a little bit here because of his uh, her insane damage, even though the rest of the team is kind of lacking. We are gonna have the um, damage buff from um, Kendrick on here. So she's gonna do crazy damage. We'll see though. We can gimp this team further by bringing uh, maybe the water mercenary and excluding the uh, Naga, because the Naga is doing a great job shielding. I should have thought of that. All right, as you can see, he popped the Undying buff. It was at this moment he knew. He fucked up. But we didn't have heal, so that's a problem. So even though this is, um, this is going to be nature, we're still going to bring good old D.Va. She does an excellent job healing. We're going to take him out. We are going to put in um, our Fire Snake Lady. And then we are going to take her out. And we are going to put in, let's see, I don't remember who I beat this with. Uh, you know what? We're going to put in him. Let's see how he does. Okay, so the thought here on bringing Amnethyst is that the Undying buff is going to go off. And the heal over time regeneration is going to buy time to heal them up to full. The... Um, the uh, immunity is going to prevent us from getting the OGD, which is which could possibly one tick kill us if we're low enough. Because in dying doesn't heal you, it just prevents you from dying. So it's a stall tactic, right? You get on dying, your units live, and then your healers uh, heal that unit up. So that's what we're thinking. And I am actually, with the improved AI on this, I'm really a huge fan of um, Amethyst. We're going to see how this goes, though. We're going to see how it goes. Again, we're not running Monus because this is a, uh, a nature dungeon. And I want to see if it's possible without Monus because if he can carry them through with no Monus core down reduction, it's a very good sign for this unit, for this champion. Sorry about that. So used to calling them units. Uh, I played Brave Frontier for a long time, and they were units there. And then in uh, Summoner's War, I kept calling them units, even though they're uh, monsters. And here it's champions. So everybody's got their own name for it. So it just, I think, uh, Brave Frontier stuck with me the longest. Played that for a very, very long time. At least I'm getting calling gear gear now instead of the other thing. So we're doing good there. All right. Here's the boss. Here's the boss. Let's see how this shenanigans go. All right, we're not getting OGD, which is good, which is good. We don't have tons and tons of damage, though. I recognize that. But people are living. I'm actually liking this combo, to be honest with you. I'm really liking it. So, I mean, the team is good. So we might have come across a really good... Yes, look at this. Well, this is nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. That immunity plus that heal over time is just doing great. Our only issue really here is damage. Having Monus would help in a sense that we would be getting more OGD. Okay, here, here's a test. Here's Okay, so we popped on dying. Can we get everyone back to full health? And we can. We can. So 
we have another this is really good so you can have a slow team here I realize this isn't the best team to bring in here due to damage but this is an excellent test for Dragon Guard now if 45 seconds elapses and we can have that up again for the next AOE, this is going to be pretty freaking stable team. Here's why. Because we really aren't going to worry about this. Look, just the day-to-day, -day oh, spoke too soon. He had 52 stacks of rage though. 52 stacks. So this, is, this was a really good test. Okay, here we go. All right, so it did not work for EV10. It will not save you from a one shot. Okay, we've seen him in SW. We've seen him in EV10. What are my thoughts? So he looks like he can work in EV10. The issue is you are going to need to make sure you can survive the hits. His ability does not proc if you get one shot it's you're done you're just it's over so you have to make sure that your units are built to be able to take the punishment he is not a get out of jail free card for that so they have to be able to take it if they can take it even if they go to one hp that is under 30 percent he is going to pop undying to give your heals a chance to heal that particular unit up if they cannot survive the hits as we saw in ev10 then it is game over his ability will not work for this reason you need to make sure that you build your team appropriately using him if you do meet the requirements you can take the hit from either the roar or from the single target breath attack then he will absolutely work for you there and sw10 because you do need the strip and it is highly valuable i would say he does not work as well there i personally don't see me going six star on this unit and i admit there could be some key thing that i'm missing here maybe it's my unit level even though that i can still see it is going to work because you only have that really one big hit you do you have the roar you have your single target if you're going to die the single target then you probably shouldn't be in send it anyway because, I mean, he does that often, and that's going to one-shot your unit. So, if you have the ability to survive, and you do have a free slot in EV, he's worth it. Um, if you're in SW, uh, he's not so much worth it, because he takes up that slot. But that slot is just so valuable that he takes up. For me, it's going to really depend on your team. I likely, like I said, I'm not going to go six-star with him. Um, I would rather just live through it and build more heals, use Zevron. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What are some of the builds and teams that you're using them in? As always, thank all you dudes and dudettes for watching. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And stay frosty out there.